today we will start trust welded connection just to remind you we have three different type of uh, connections sometimes the connection is welded sometimes the connection is bolted sometimes the, con the connection is riveted but this one is very old fashioned okay we no longer using rivets in connection we are using bolts with different types we are using welding just to give you a hint welding uh, will be done inside so probably uh, during also fabrication we have angle this is the member in the truss and we have another angle and we have another angle. We need to connect all of them together at this joint. So we can use gusset blade. At this time, we are using something called welding. Can you watch it? So welding between the member and the gusset blade. Welding between the gusset blade and the member. Looks like this, or like this, or like this. We have different types of welding based on the technique used in welding. We have something called fillet weld, groove weld, plug and the slot welds. What is the difference? Okay, it's very easy. If you have a sharp angle between this part and this part, we can use fillet weld. This one. We have this blade and this blade. So we can use fill it weld just fill it or groove weld i'm sorry if you have a blade like this and another blade like this before welding we need to do or create groove something like this and like this in the plate and then you have to fill this groove by welding you know what i mean so if you are looking for these different types we need to do something in the connected members and then we need to to, to create groove and then fill this groove with weld blood and the slot weld we will create a hole in the member and fill this hole with welding so you have this plate i'm gonna create here a hole and then i will put another plate here like this if you fill this hole with welding so the welding will be connected to the lower part by this chunk of welding Sometimes this hole looks like slot and then this slot is filled with welding. So at this time we can call it plug and the slot welds. So we have different types of welding based on the technique used. We will cover this type of welding. We will design fillet weld. Before starting, we have some limitations. Minimum size of fillet weld. To make sure you understand this point, we have blade and we have another blade. Then we will weld these two blades by fillet weld. This fillet weld looks like this, this triangle. This distance, which called W, equal to this distance, which called W. This W can be called weld size. What is the minimum welding size? Weld size is the distance connected with this member and equal the distance connected to this member. So this distance can be called welding size. What is the minimum? size of the fillet weld. We have different size. 
1 8 inch 3 16 inch quarter inch 5 16 inch which size i have to use the minimum size i have to use based on what is the thickness of the connected member if the thickness until quarter inch we are going to use this minimum welding size between quarter and half inch we are going to use this minimum size between half and the three quarter this is the minimum over then or greater than three quarter this is the minimum size of weld one of you will say hey okay this blade has a thickness half inch and this blade has a thickness quarter inch so we have two different thickness of the connected member which thickness i'm gonna use if you are looking to this table material thickness of the thinner part so if you have this situation, the thinner part is quarter. So your the thickness is quarter inch. This blade will be connected to this blade. This one has one uh, half inch thickness. This one has quarter inch thickness. I'm gonna use the thinner one, quarter. So quarter inch means the minimum welding uh, size one eight inch. So this lens, the minimum lens here, one eight inch or greater. The minimum lens here is one eight inch or greater. We will design this, but I'm talking about the minimum. The minimum size of fillet whip. Okay, we have minimum. We have maximum. We have maximum. Uh, if the material connected has a thickness less than quarter inch so please the maximum thickness or the maximum i'm sorry uh, along edges of material less than quarter inch no greater than the thickness of the material please the maximum welding size no greater than the thickness of the material If the if the if the thickness is less than quarter inch, if the thickness more than quarter inch, okay, the thickness the maximum one not greater than the thickness of the material minus one sixteen inch. For example, let's say we have blade here. We have another blade. This blade has thickness three eight, and this blade has thickness uh one half let's start what is the minimum what is the maximum by the way if you have different thickness between the two connected member i'm gonna use the thinner one so the thickness i'm gonna use is what do you think three eight or one half three eight if you are looking for the minimum size of welding okay i will open this table with thickness 38 i believe 38 is in between one quarter and one half so the minimum will be 316. what is the maximum okay the thinner part thickness is 38. i believe the uh, edges of the material one quarter or more so the thickness is quarter or more 38 greater than one quarter okay so the maximum thickness not greater than the thickness minus 16 so the minus the maximum will be the thickness i'm gonna use 38 minus 116 so the maximum welding size will be five sixteen. So guys, before starting to design, you have to figure out what is the minimum, what is the maximum, because you cannot choose something else. So you have a range right now, the welding size, 
in between three sixteens as a minimum, five sixteens as a maximum. So you don't have a choice below this number or greater than this number. You have to be in between. Does that make sense? So this slide is very important. If you are designing something by welding, you have to follow the minimum and the maximum size of weld. Any questions so far, guys? Do you have any question? Yeah, I didn't think about uh, the homework. Let, let, let me think about the homework, Alan. Don't worry. But uh, right now, do you have any question? Anybody has any question for this slide exactly about the minimum and the maximum? The only confusion, if you have two different thickness connected together, okay, go ahead and use the thinner thickness. This thinner thickness will help you to figure out the minimum and the maximum one. This one with a thickness quarter or less, this one is more than or quarter and more, okay? Any question? This is light. How to get the design strengths of a welding? So, guys, as I told you, this distance. which is equal to this distance, will form the, the meaning of welding size, W. I'm sorry, we ha I, I have a mistake here. I have to correct it. W is the weld size. Okay? So, this weld has a lens. That makes sense? If we go back to the first slide, this one, can you watch here? This welding has a lens between this point and this point. So we have a lens, L. So the welding has a lens. L is the weld lens. Uh, w. If you multiply W, the welding size, by cosine 45 degree, you can get something called throat. Not welding size, I'm sorry. Is that throat? By the way, here is the welding. This is the W. This is the W. The value of throat is this distance. Hold throat. This angle is 45 degree. So if you multiply W. Guys, I'm sorry, I have a technical issue here. So I have to restart my laptop. So just a moment, okay? Don't go away.
I'm back. So guys, uh, the throat distance, this angle is 45 degree. So the throat equal W cosine 45. That makes sense? So this distance equal to this one. If you multiply the lens of the welding by the throat distance, you can get something called the effective area of welding. Area welding effective. So I multiplied this weld is extending in this direction. That makes sense. If you multiply this strut by the lens of the welding, you can get the effective area of welding. Area welding effective. Okay. That's so your screen yes. is not showing. Say it again. Your screen isn't showing. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So guys, this angle is 45 degree between the welding lens here, W and the W. So this perpendicular distance can be called throat equal W cosine 45 degree. If you multiply W cosine 45 degree, which is the lens here, this one, by the lens of the welding, you can get something called area effective of welding. So L time uh, W cosine 45 degree. So this little distance by this distance can be called the effective area of welding. So we have few parameters here. Please pay attention. W is the welding size that you decided before what is the minimum what is the maximum so the example i covered before w must be greater than or equal and smaller than or equal this w represent the distance here w and the distance here w but if you are talking about a different parameter, which you called throat equal W cosine 45 degree. If you multiply this throat by the lens of the welding, you can get the effective area. If you multiply this effective area by the nominal shearing stress or the ultimate shearing stress of welding, you can get the nominal strength. Once you get the nominal strength, you can multiply phi by the nom uh, nominal strength to get the design strength of welding. Make sure finally that the force and the member is smaller than or equal the design strength of the welding. One more time. One more time. Based on the dimensions given, dimensions means we have welding size, we have lens of the welding. I can figure out the effective area of welding. This effective area can be multiplied by FNW which you call the ultimate shearing stress of the welding, then you can get the nominal strength. If you multiply the nominal strength by phi in welding equal 0.75, I can figure out the design strength of welding, and then I can make a comparison. So we didn't cover yet what is the meaning of the ultimate shearing stress. Ultimate shearing stress of welding equal 0.6, FEXX. I'm sorry, what do you mean by FEXX? The filler metal classification strength. Guys, if you are watching someone welding, 
you will see these materials. This rod, welding rod. We have different types of these rods based on the strengths of these rods. I can figure out the value of FEXX. So, first step, what is the type of this rod? Which you call filler metal rod. Based on the type, I can give you the value of FEXX. We have different value here, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. If you are looking for this number, on the rod, you can figure out these values. So, for example, 70. I can go here and multiply 70 by 0.6 to figure out the FNW. Once you get FNW, I can put it here, multiply it by area effective to get the nominal strength. Multiply nominal strength by FE, which is 0.75. I can figure out the design strength. Once you calculate the design strength, I can make a comparison and make sure the force in the member is smaller than or equal, at least the design strength of the weld. Can we do this example? Very easy. We have a blade. This blade is a tension member. How can I, de I design this blade? We covered this before, how to design a tension member. It's not our topic right now. But this tension member is connected to this gusset blade by this welding on this side and this side. So the tension member is connected to a gusset blade as shown. Uh, the welds are 316 inch. So the size of this weld is 316. So W equal 3. 16. Welding size means W. I believe I can figure out the throat, which is W cosine 45 degree. So I can figure out this value. 3 16 cosine 45 equal 0.132 inch. Anybody can tell me what is the effective welding area guys it's given that the welding lens four inch from this side and another four inch from the other side so the effective area of the welding equal 0 0.132 which is w cosine 45 degree time what time the lens I told you the effective area equal W cosine 45 degree time lens. Anybody can tell me what is the lens here? What do you think? What is the lens of welding here? Any answer? What is the lens of the welding? Do you think the lens is four? Or something else? Something else. Thank you, Barack. Something else. The lens of the weld, I, I forget to say, L is the total lens of weld. What you mean by total? Every single lens of welding. This member is connected to this gusset blade by this weld and this weld. So we have four inch plus four inch. We have eight inch. So the effective area will be 1.06 inch square. Okay, so be careful. Uh, the rod, the filling metal rod used is E70XX electrode. So F E X X equals 70. So F W N equal 0.6 F E X X. This value will be 
42. So the nominal strength of the welding equal FWN time area welding effective equal 42 time 1.06 equal 44.55 kip. The design strength phi RN phi equal 0.75, I think. 0.75. So this value equal 33.41. So the design strength of this connection is 33.41. I hope the force in this member must be smaller than or equal this value. So P ultimate must be smaller than, I'm sorry, smaller than or equal this value. That makes sense? So this example is everything is given. The welding is given, the length of the welding is given, the size is given. We need to figure out, we need to check, we need to calculate what is the design strength of this welding. Then we can make a comparison. We have another example. This example is a design example. We don't have anything. We have a member has a dead load and a life load. We need to figure out what is the design of welding here. What is the size and what is the lens? Nothing is given. Nothing is given. Any questions so far? Let's start this example. It's very easy. We have determined the weld lens to support the surface load shown. Uh, with the fillet and the fillet weld made with so the the size and the lens is not given we need to figure out these parts okay guys what do you think p ultimate the ultimate load in this member equal 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 life load that makes sense so this value will be 1.2 time 14, yes, 1.6 time 25, so 56.8, yep. Anybody can tell me what is the maximum and what is the minimum welding size? Yeah, let's do. This angle is six times six times one half. This gusset blade has a thickness 3.8. So which thickness will govern? The thinner thickness equal, this one is one half, this one is 3.8, so it will be 3.8. Can you go back to this slide? The thickness is 3.8. 3.8 is something between one quarter and one half, so the minimum is 3.16. What about the maximum? 3.8, which means quarter and more. So the thickness will be the thickness, uh, I'm sorry, the size will be the thickness minus 1.16. It will be 3.8 minus one sixteens, it will be five second sixteens. So I'm gonna assume the welding size equal, what do you think? I need a number between this one and this one. To make it practical, I need a number as multiple of sixteens, something like uh, Four sixteens, five sixteens, three sixteens. Okay, we can choose, for example, four sixteens, which is one quarter 
امشي so for design I assumed the welding size not from yourself but we have rules you have to follow the minimum value and the maximum value guys you can assume 316 that's right you can assume 516 that's right you can assume in between 416 that's right but you have to assume something in between okay i will do welding here and another welding there if you assume this welding l so the area welding effective will be quarter inch cosine 45 degree time 2l that makes sense we have L from this side, and we have another L from the other side. So I multiplied it by 2L. This number will be 0.35L. Guys, the value of F, E, X, X, depend on the type of electrode, is 80. So the value of N, N, W, which is 0.6 Fe, X, X, 48. So the design strengths of welding equal 0.75 Fe, time. F, N, W, 48, time. Area effective, 0.35 L. So this value will be 12.7 kip. Guys, we need the design strength of this welding. I'm sorry, I forget something here. L time L. It's a function of L. Everything is still function of L. 12.7 L kips. I need this design strength to be greater than or equal the P ultimate in this member. So the minimum requirement, I'm gonna assume 12.7L equal the P ultimate, which is 56.8. From this equation, I can figure out the length of the weld. It will be 4.4 inch. So please, this lens, this welding lens from this side, 4.4 inch, and from this side will be 4.4 inch. Don't forget, I assume the one side is L. So the, the two sides will be 2L. So the final value L, is 4.4 inch this lens which equal to this lens so the final design of this connection i decided to put welding here with welding size quarter and the lens of this welding 4.4 4.4 from the two sides so guys for the first example you have everything is given so i can figure out the design strengths and probably i will make comparison to say this connection is safe or unsafe the second example nothing is given except what is the force in this member tension or compression whatever tension or compression doesn't matter i'm looking for what is the p ultimate from this p ultimate i can design what you need from the design i need what is the, uh, the size of the welding? What is the length of the welding? The size, I assumed it by following what is the minimum value, what is the maximum value, so I can assume the size. Then from these set of equations, I can figure out what is the required length of welding. Any question?
Any question? Looks good. So guys, I, I, I would like to make, you are feeling something looks like real design. So guys, you have a truss and I can figure out the force in this member of the truss from Riza, the ultimate, probably, probably 90 kip. So right now, you can assume what is the size of this weld. Remember, we have size from this side and another size from the uh, weld from the other side. So you can assume what is the size of the weld and you can figure out what is the required length here. That makes sense? So that's all. Sometimes, just for your information, sometimes uh, the welding here is not enough, so we need longer. Sometimes you can add transverse welding. This one will be transverse. This one is longitudinal. What you mean by longitudinal and the transverse? Okay, longitudinal, the direction of the force barrel to the welding lens. Transverse welding means the welding is perpendicular to the direction of the applied force. The standard set, if you have this case uh, and to figure out the contribution of the transverse welding, we have two equations. You need to use the maximum one. The standard said you can add the longitudinal to the transverse, and that's all. The standard said, or you can add 85% of the longitudinal plus 150% of the transverse together. Which value I'm going to use? You have to use the larger value. So in this case, I'm sorry, you have to calculate what is the Rn for transverse, I'm sorry, for longitudinal alone. What is the Rn for the transverse alone? And then you need to set up this one and set up this one and use the maximum value. Let's do this by this example. It's very easy. We need to determine the design strength of the welded connection. My question is, this example is different. Why? Because the whole welding, this one and this one, parallel to the load. So we don't have any problem. We don't have any transverse uh, welding. But in this case, the welding here and here and here. What is the problem? The problem is this welding can be considered longitudinal. This welding can be considered longitudinal because they are parallel to the applied loop. However, this welding can be considered transverse. What should I do? Nothing. It's very easy. First of all, Fe XX is given 70. Fn welding will be 0.6 Fe XX equal 42. Let's start with the longitudinal. Rn longitudinal equal 42 time. What is the size? 7, 8, so 7, 8, cosine 45 degree. What is the length, the total length of any longitudinal uh, welding? We have here 2 inch, we have here 2 inch, so we have 4 inch. That's it, you are done. For RNL, so 7, 8, 
time cosine 45 time 4 time 42 103.9 what is the uh, nominal strength of the transverse okay 42 nothing changed but the throat is 7 8 cosine that's fine the same but what is the length of the transverse welding six inch this is the only difference so the value for the transverse strength transverse welding strength is 155.9 what is the final nominal strength for this connection Okay, we have two situations. You need to set up both of them. The first one, you can add the longitudinal plus the transverse, and that's it. So we can add 103.9 plus 155.9, and that's all. 255.9. Keep. Or 0.85 time the longitudinal which is 103.9 plus 1.5 time the transverse which is 155.9 what is the value here three hundred twenty two kip which value I'm going to use? What do you think? The larger value. This one is 259. This one is 322. Uh, so the Rn for this connection equals 322. Kip. If you would like to get the design strength, you can multiply this value by 0 0.75. So you can get the design 241. Kip. That's all. So, this is how to design welding connection. It's very easy. Only this equation can help you to design the connection. If you have longitudinal and the transverse welding, okay, nothing will be changed. You need only to divide this welding to two parts. The first part for longitudinal alone and find R in longitudinal. The second part, the transverse, find it alone and set up this one and this one. You can use the larger value to get the nominal strength of this connection. Any question? Uh, guys, uh, I would like to cover this point before leaving. Please, nobody leave. Uh, don't be confused in the exam. Probably I will give you this example. Hey guys, I have a truss joint. And I will give you this joint. And I will give you numbers. I'm not sure about the numbers, but uh, I will assume anything. So 120 kip, which is P ultimate. P ultimate here equal 150. For example, P ultimate here equal um, probably 50 kip. P ultimate here equal uh, 75 kip. And I will ask, uh, ask you, hey guys, design this bolted connection and sketch this connection few words just a few words <laughs> and a lot of <laughs> calculations don't be 
Don't worry about this problem. This problem is a piece of cake. You need first to design members. You have a tension member with a force 150. Design it and tell me what is the member. Two angle, single angle, six times six times one half, four times four times quarter. Design this member. Design this member. Design this member and design this member. Guys, please be careful. This member is tension. This member is tension. This member is tension. This member is compression. So you will design three members under tension and one member under compression. Once you design the members, you can figure out how many bolts you need here. So you can assume bolts. You can assume diameter. You can assume everything. And probably I will give you a hint about the diameter or something like this. Probably. If I, I, if I didn't, okay, you can assume what you want. Once you get the number of bolts, number of bolts, number of bolts, number of bolts, I taught you last meeting, I believe. If you would like to draw a connection, you need to draw the center line first of each member. Do you remember that? Then go ahead and draw the horizontal members first. And then the vertical member. And then the inclined member. Once you are done, go ahead and put your bolts. Guys, you have to follow what is the minimum distance between center line to center line of the holes over the ball. What is the edge distance? So, for example, this one need uh, three, this one need two, this one need two, this one will need three. The minimum number is two. We cannot put only one. The minimum number is two. Uh, two. So I will got put the gusset bleed here and connect between these edges. There is a connection. So everything you learned in design, I did it in this connection. I designed the member. I designed connection because it's bolted. Probably I will ask you to be welded. I'm not sure. Okay. So don't be frustrated about something you didn't see before. No, you you already familiar with all of this stuff. But read the problem carefully.